PJ Orsini is in studio. PJ, good morning to you. Good morning to you. How's life treating you, man? You know, one appliance at a time. It's a good day out there. <laughs> one appliance at a time. Uh, but it's not just appliances any longer. You're yeah, right. No, we've someone got a great idea to make the store bigger and get into everything. So it's uh, we have a full design team in there, kitchen cabinets, counters, flooring, uh, appliances, uh, all the stuff that comes with it, tile and all that. And then now the fun one is the outdoor living, outdoor cooking world. That's a lot more fun than selling a washer and dryer as a grill or you know something like that. Is is winter out outdoor cooking like the next growth area? Yeah, you know I we shovel to get to the grill. So uh, outdoor cooking now is pretty much a year round thing. Mm-hmm. It used to be you put the grill away on Labor Day. Now everyone's cooking outside, especially with Thanksgiving coming in two weeks. I mean we're we have people in left and right getting stuff ready to throw their turkey on the trigger or on the big green egg or something like that. Right. My, mm-hmm. I had a neighbor that used to do that every Thanksgiving. He's three doors up from me. We both back to the woods. So I'd be out raking leaves Thanksgiving morning, and we would go to their house for dinner, and that smell would come wafting down my way. That's the best way to sell grills in a subdivision. You get one on a porch and yeah. hope it's a breezy day and everybody wants one. That's a, that's a fact. I was in the fire service when the fad for um, deep frying turkeys oh, first yeah. caught on. Ooh, we. We do that. Did, did we put out a lot of houses? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not in time, though. No, well, you know, if anything you save is is good. But yeah, be be careful with the deep fried yeah. turkey. Don't don't if it's if it's frozen, you're making a mistake. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Yeah. So, uh, PJ, you're also involved in some other stuff downtown too. Everything, yeah. We have, um, what are we doing downtown? We have, of course, our properties we do, and then uh, we are opening, hopefully, springtime. We said that last year, but hopefully in springtime we'll have a brewery and a distillery open uh, downtown Martinsburg. Are the, uh, have the laws been uh, loosened to allow a bit more of an enjoyable experience in, in breweries and wineries in West Virginia yet? Absolutely. We've, been, we've gotten some great help out of the local um, politicians around here. The last three of the last four years we were able to get some requirements and some things change to more modern times things are supposed to be a lot of it's a very antiquated um, prohibition era law that's on the books and when you start thinking differently from booze and start thinking agritourism which is yes. what it is uh, it really opened up the books and a lot of things that didn't make sense our politicians have been great to say all right, it's time to make a change with this. So, yeah, we're getting a lot of things done. And every year, starting next month, I typically call a lot of the distilleries we work with and we know and ask what the problems are. And then we get them to, you know, uh, Senator Barrett, Senator Trump, to everyone around. And they kind of roll it into what they're working with every year. And the guys at the Bavarian or Christian's been great with it. So we kind of work together to say, here's what doesn't make sense. What can we do about it? What's the next thing that needs to be uh, loosened, amended, changed law-wise in regards to agritourism? Uh, it'll what, what needs to happen will never happen. The ABC has created a monopoly on how people can get a liquor license to do what they do. So most states, it's a three-tier system. West Virginia is a four-tier. So if we wanted to sell a product that we are making to a local restaurant, we have to sell it to the state. The state has to sell it to a liquor store. The restaurant has to buy it from the liquor store. We can't distribute to a local entity. And then the one we wish would go away, it it, it affects, it, it doesn't, it'll affect us more than the smaller ones, but there's a law in the books that says um, any distillery that sells their products at their facility, uh, when there's a licensee, they have to pay a 3% tax to the ABC and the ABC pays that tax out to the licensees in their market because they didn't get the chance to sell it. Well, up here, you know, you've got plenty of places that have liquor licenses you can buy from. When you get to Southern West Virginia, there's a couple of distilleries that are four and five people family operations. And the only place in that market that sells is a Walmart. So you've got a family business paying a state, a tax to the state. And then the state is giving it to Walmart because they didn't get the opportunity to sell it. And there's no caveat that says in order for you to get that money, you have to sell the product. So it's just basically free money you have to give because the ABC has created this situation where when you buy your license, you own that territory. Is that more easily fixed than the overall four-tiered structure the ABC has in place? The um, Noah's Ark on the way to Morgantown would be built before that system gets <laughs> fixed. Well, that's that's uh, unfortunate. I was telling this story, um, I guess it was last week, two weeks ago, and I can't remember to whom it was, but... Um, my wife recently got together with some friends from high school in uh, Pittsburgh, and they all met in Harper's Ferry, and they were going to go visit wineries. 
and every single one of the wineries was in Virginia, just across the river. And West Virginia got none of that business, despite the fact that they met in West Virginia. Those laws need to be loosened up. Yeah, it's it's tricky. Everything we've tried to do that is aggressively progressive, we're told is a non-starter. Um, remember, the Panhandle is an island, and the rest of the state doesn't care. So anything we try to do up here, uh, we're affecting with Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. When you're in the middle of the state, they're not a border state. And there's nothing really going on around them. So they look at us all this as kind of, in my opinion, not their problem. Mm-hmm. So for us, you know, think of a couple of years ago when you couldn't serve anything before one o'clock in the afternoon. The Osmonds worked hard and had the brunch bill push. You're still at eleven. You're going to Loudoun County or you're going to Frederick, and brunches start at nine a.m. There's a lot of money that was leaving the area that didn't have to, and that changed a lot of stuff for people. You have, uh, I know, something coming up uh, very shortly. Uh, it has to do with, were you like a grilling competition or something like that? Tomorrow, Friday? Yeah, yeah tomorrow. We're tomorrow. having a, it's a big, not so much a competition, but a big uh, grilling, our biggest outdoor cooking event of the year. We're going to have um, five brands. It's our turkey bowl. So with mm-hmm. a little play on Thanksgiving coming up, or we're going to have uh, Traeger, of course. We're a platinum Traeger dealer. And we brought Big Green Ag in uh, a couple months ago. When uh, Sunfire was open, they sold those very well. And there's a lot of people that like that Kamado-style cooking. So we brought those in. Uh, Gosney Pizza Ovens. So we're going to do a lot of turkey stuff in a Gosney Pizza Oven. Great. They're probably my new favorite product we brought in. 60, 90 seconds, knock out a pizza. Simple to use. A lot of fun. And then Loco Cookers is what you mentioned, deep frying turkeys. And then some uh, boil and broil products. And... The uh, Brio Fire Pits. Brio is the newest brand we're bringing in there. Fire Pits, but you can also cook on them, sear on them, a lot of other opportunities for cooking with it. So we'll have all of those going. I have manufacturer reps coming up all day tomorrow. We'll be cooking from 11 to 5. 11 to 5. Yep. 360 Hack Wilson Way. 360 Hack Wilson Way. If you can't find it, just yeah, sniff. And the aroma will take you to it. Mr. Miller. Let your nose lead you. It reminds me of the old cartoons, right, where they would set the pie and then that. He'd float along. Yeah, you'd yeah. float along yeah. until you well, came to the pie. billboard right so. above my building with a finger literally pointing down. So <laughs> Can't miss it. Yeah. A polite finger, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how much time do you spend when you talk about some of these new product lines and, and how much you're enjoying those, uh, kind of going out and searching for those? or or how much do they kind of find you, if you will, as you just hear about them? I mean, how how does that kind of all work? So years ago in the old store, when we were a much smaller company, um, we had to work to get brands. So Traeger was one that uh, we were an early adopter to them and to the point where they just sent me a grill and said, if you don't like it, you know, here's a free grill. And (laughs) needless to say, we really enjoyed the product. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the leadership from Traeger left and went to uh, Gosney, the pizza oven company, as Traeger changed operations. And they reached out to us and said, we know what you've done with Traeger. How do we get on your floor? And I'm very big on I won't sell it unless I try it. Mm-hmm. So a couple of days later, the rep showed up with two products, put them together, cooked for us, left them and said, try to break them. And that's what we did. We tried to – I tried took them home, tried to do what my worst customer would do to them. Overheat, don't cover them, don't clean them as well. Um, and so far, they're relatively bulletproof. Big Green Egg didn't need any vetting. They've been around forever. Um, and the sales rep that is now the Big Green Egg rep was my original Traeger guy. So he wanted to be what we're doing. And uh, Brio came from the – they're kind of finding us now. I mean, they see what we're doing in the outdoor world. Brio came from my Gosney rep. They're good friends, and it folded in. And then Loco was one I went looking for. We're looking for niche products. If you can find it at a box store, I'm not crazy worried about it. I know Traeger's in there a little bit, but we've focused more on the, you know, specialized product with them. Mm -hmm. Um, But we wanted to have the product on hand. I know the quality is there. Um, With Loco, I bought one of their products and uh, beat the heck out of it. We were we took it down to the Carolinas and steamed crab, steamed shrimp, did everything we could to see how it would work out. Once again, overheated it, left it (laughs) out, did what we could to try to structurally break it. And so far, it's been good. Um, now I've got brands left and right. They We have a company in Chicago that want, or a company from Dallas that wants to send us to Chicago next year to go check out their high-end product for their a built-in grill. That'll be kind of the next world we get into in the spring. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we go and check it, vet it. And I've, I rejected three other pizza oven companies before this one came through. And they've sent us ovens, and I broke them. They just – I didn't like them. Uh, and we asked our sales team as well, you know, check them out. What do you think? Just uh, 
th there's a reason some things cost more, as everyone knows. And if we weren't happy with it, we wouldn't sell it. Do you go to conventions as well? Do they hold huge events to, you know, where you can walk through and kind of look at everything? Absolutely. We belong to a, a buying group, a nationwide marketing group. So mm -hmm. we are one of, I think it's 5,500 dealers in it. So that's how we can price match the box stores and everything. We have digital price tags in the appliance store that um, every 12 minutes check the websites to make sure if a box store changes their price, ours matches it within 12 minutes. So, yeah, we go to two shows a year. I was just in San Antonio about three weeks ago for a uh, kitchen outdoor or a kitchen cabinet design company mm -hmm. uh, convention. And then we're in next year's a rough one. We're in Vegas in February, Vegas in March, Vegas in April. Uh, and in July, we're in uh, Atlanta. And they're all a combination of conventions, buy fairs, things like that. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of Vegas. It's too much Vegas. <laughs> that I never thought I would say that in my yeah, life, but yeah. too much Vegas. By the way, Heather Compton says she would like to be an Orsini's uh, taste tester. Uh, 11 to 5 tomorrow. Bring a fork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about two years ago, we were going through the process of outfitting. We are building a house here in Berkeley County, and we were going through the process of, of selecting appliances. And of course, that was the height of COVID. And we were looking at the Wolf and Viking, you know, the, the high ends. It, it was like a, a year and a half yeah. wait to get the that those appliances, so we ended up going with GE Monogram. Very happy with it. Um, it. Are we past that now? Can you can we actually buy things and and get them quickly? Kinda. I can hit you with uh, you know the immediate stuff. Washers and dryers are a daily dying item. Refrigerators as well. Next week's my favorite week of the year. Everyone self cleans their oven to get it ready for Thanksgiving, and the old ones die. So we'll sell a lot of ovens next week because of self-cleaning. It's a great tradition in the appliance world. Um, it's sort of better. I mean, today I've got one of my delivery teams delivering a – it's a Gen Air built-in uh, wine cabinet. It's taken 13 months to get it here. Wow. Uh, it's, it's specialized items. It's, you know, your, your Wolf and Sub-Zero product. Great product. Very small percentage of the market. A lot of that's relatively handmade. They're still 8 to 10 months on certain items. Monogram we've been getting in pretty quickly. Uh, KitchenAid. Cafe has been good, but there's still some niche colors. Uh, the the black slate is tricky to get because it's not a, uh, a macro color. Stainless is still king. Um, but we have enough to keep busy. I mean, we, we figured out ways to run constructively during um, COVID. It wasn't easy, uh, but we it was for us, you know, I had just opened that store up in November of 19, and the world ended February, March of 20. So it was a complete up and down roller coaster as to how we mm -hmm. went. But we got lucky and we were big enough to go. And then you ask about brands. We brought GE in about two years ago. We spent about 14 months vetting that company, making sure, I mean, everyone knows who GE is, but we went to Louisville twice. We went to the plant. We, I was looking for back end help. Like is our parts mm -hmm. going to be readily available? Is service technicians in our area able to handle the volume we do and things like that? So there's a lot that goes into picking a brand. There's a reason I don't sell LG and Samsung. Very pretty stuff. Won't have them in my house. I won't touch them. I won't sell them. In a previous neighborhood, we had a um, a repair guy. He's that he was Emmett. You know, he's the, the guy that had the truck that had all the the parts. And we had an issue with I think it was a dishwasher. But his lament was he's very close to not being able to to work because of the amount of computer stuff and you know the electronics, high end electronics that are going into uh, appliances, and it's. Are you finding that, that more and more the when something goes bad, they need to have a specialized repair person to come out and fix it? And where does one go to find them? So here's a litmus test. How old is Emmett? Um, uh, he, was, he was a young 60. Okay, there you go. So um, it, it's, it, the, the, chain, the game is changing. I mean, a lot of these products have diagnostics on them like a car would. Uh -huh. The fun stuff is the connected product. Uh, GE and Whirlpool are putting a lot of stuff into being connected, run it from the app. COVID slowed it down, but probably in the next 24 months, I would think, if you have your washer, dryer, refrigerator, whatever, connected to the Wi-Fi in your home and you have a service issue, you're going to be able to call me. You'll stand in front of the machine, get me access, and I'll be able to remote diagnose it from the store. So if cool. you need a – we have hard water around here. If you need a water valve, I can say, right, I'm going to get this ordered for you. We'll call you when it comes in. Now, you know, I have one technician. Finding a technician is like finding a good welder. They just don't make them anymore. So we have to train our own, and it takes six months to a year to get someone online. The one we have is good. He's been doing it for years, um, but he can run eight to ten service calls a day. We sell thousands of appliances a year. So it, to get to have that capacity coverage is tricky. Um, 
a lot of the stuff he he's training we have service flashes the old school way my grandparents did it where we would have one part to fix everything those days are gone mm -hmm. every appliance has a series number uh, one board doesn't fit the same refrigerator because of series it's I mean, that's why I'm gray everywhere. It's, 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 it's a lot more complicated than it used to be. And, and why is it if I go to the local bar, they have a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. They put the stuff in, they run it, it takes a minute and a half, everything comes out clean. The one in my kitchen, it takes like two hours. Because the government doesn't care about commercial appliances the way they do about residential. So what... Uh, why buy, does it take so much? John, does, buy a bar. There we go. <laughs> why does it take so much longer? Why do dishwashers run so much longer than they used to? I mean, water use. Uh, the uh, EPA defines where your um, Energy Star guidelines have to be. You have to be under so much water and under so much electric. And I when see. they take electric, they account for heating the water in a water heater. So it's a lot cheaper to run a motor washing them longer than it is to heat up water on the electric use. The average dishwasher is ten to twelve cents a load to run with water and electric. So the, the e-star uh, minimums just changed about 60 90 days ago and a few models fell out of um compliance for e-star and that's the other cool thing about connected products they'll be able to send an update and change the algorithm and on how they're going to work and how they're going to clean so there's no great answer but yeah dishwashers an hour and a half two hours to wash now washing machines are 45 minutes to an hour it's because they're recycling that water through filters running it back out and reusing that same water rather than the old school machines so my grandparents used 48 to 62 gallons of water for a load. These new ones are 16 to 24. Yeah, the old washers used to fill up with water. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, is that part of the reason why things don't seem to last as long as they did before? That's part of it. The other side of it, well, I mean, especially with refrigerators. You know, the old refrigerators, once a week someone will come in and say, the one in my garage is 30 years old, never <laughs> had a problem. It's probably costing you 25 to $30 a month to run it in electric. These new ones are $7. So, you know, a full 29 cubic foot fridge might run you 8 to $10 a month to run. You could have bought three of these in the price of the one you bought plus time having it going. The other part of it is, too, there's box stores in every corner. Everyone wants the latest and greatest thing they can get for as cheap as you can get it. And, you know, the the life of the appliance, the average appliance life is 8 to 10 years. Uh, if anyone tells you different, they don't fix them. Uh, some of the nicer brands, the the Cafe, the Monogram, Monogram is a little higher. But I would say like your Cafe, your KitchenAid, your 10 to 12 years. The biggest killer of appliances right now is power surges. In our area, hard water is rough on them. Mm -hmm. The power surges are the biggest thing to take out boards. Boards are they're in our toasters nowadays. So they're there, pretty reliable. Can you put a filter on your appliances to help with the power surges? Uh, it's hard to do it on a, like a 240 volt, like a range or a dryer. Uh, a lot of people put them on their homes. You can put them on your meter. Mm -hmm. That'll reduce some of it. So uh, what are some of the more reliable uh, products for washers and dryers? Uh, we uh, I only sell the Whirlpool and the GE uh, products, the so Whirlpool and Maytag, and then the different GE ones. Is, now, in 19, 19, I don't know, 88, 92, somewhere around there, I bought a Maytag washer and dryer. And that thing lasted, I think, 19, 20 years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't complicated. You, you, you hit start, and it went, <laughs> and it cleaned the clothes and whatever, and it, and it never needed a maintenance call. But I don't think that's ever going to happen again. I don't think I'm ever going to buy a Maytag or a GE or a Whirlpool or whatever and have it last 19 or 20 years anymore. We had a, years ago when we were in the old store, my dad bought a ringer washer out of a basement. And the woman bought it from my grandmother and still had the cardboard box on it because she was told to buy a spare one if you want one because you're not going to make them anymore. It was like 86. She paid $700 for it. Mm -hmm. So equate that to today's dollars. I have washers for 449 there's a reason that they don't last. Mm -hmm. There's not steel in them. It's a lighter metal. You know, they're not made for that. They're also not made to be, we have washers that are over a thousand dollars, but you're paying for features and benefits there. You're not paying for construction. Another thing about new appliances are they all sing to you now. You have a little yes. tune. <laughs> you open the door. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know when it's done. Uh, PJ, another word about tomorrow, please. Yeah. So make sure you come out 11 to five. We're going to have, uh, like I said, Traeger, uh, Big Green Egg, Brio, Loco, and uh, Gosney. Fa factory reps from all of them. Tons of food. Tons of ways to do turkey. Um, check out the pizza ovens are a lot of fun. I mean, we'll do a bunch of other stuff other than pizzas on them. But full day out there, all types of stuff going on. Discounts getting ready for Thanksgiving. And then the Black Friday sales have been going on all month. It's now Black November. So there's a lot of sales going on. This will be their biggest sale of the year. They haven't come out and said it, but I'm feeling a price increase first part of next year. So this is the, they say the second best time of this year to buy will be this month. And then 
the next time won't be a real one won't be until probably July 4th of next year. Are those uh, free samples tomorrow? Absolutely. So bring your fork, right? Bring your fork. <laughs> Excellent. That's between 11 and 5. 11 and 5. 360 Hack, Wilson, Ware, Martinsburg. PJ, good to visit with you again. Thanks for having me in.